also does something with it because I have a feeling if we have it spun into yarn or whatever it is that they do, we would then get the yarn and then we would just have yarn. <laughs> oh, and you're like, you know, what am I? Because we gonna... probably just wouldn't then send it to anybody. <laughs> you got to DIY something. Yeah. With the... <laughs> Here's some yarn. <laughs> well, um, okay. Well, speaking of animals, but not really, let's, let's talk about my favorite woven because let's be real. This is what this chat is really going to be about. Um, so the first question I got about Kieran was, will we, will we see Kieran find love of his own? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> you know, I mean, not do you plan for his question. happiness, Jen? Jeez. What? I said, do you plan for his happiness? <laughs> no, actually. I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I mean, you might. I mean, you might see something. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, you might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you just intentionally not telling us what we want to know? And by us, I mean me. Yeah, I mean, you can just ask me. Like, <laughs> I know, right? On. <laughs> I'll ask you off air. Um, okay, so speaking of romance, mm -hmm. someone asked, with regard to a shadow in the ember, which in case you, don't, you were living under a rock last week, Jen revealed the cover of a shadow in the ember, which is My the favorite. first of the flesh and fire series. Yep. And it is like a prequel ish, right? Like it's a prequel, but like it still ties into the plot and story. Yeah. Plot, right? I mean, we call it a prequel because it does take place before blood and ash, but it's really not, like, it's, to me, it's not a prequel in this true sense. I mean, maybe it is, I, but you know, it, but it's just timeline wise, I guess is timeline that it, wise, but yeah. eventually the timeline is going to cross over. I mean, so they're, so they're going to meet the timeline is going to meet. So, um, you know, so that's why it's kind of like, just not like a true prequel to me, but, and also because there's so much that you learn in this series that is going to answer questions from the Blood and Ash series. And it's also probably going to give you new questions that you're probably going to see answered in the Blood and Ash series. So, right. So no unanswered questions, but you'll yeah. still get questions. <laughs> well, you know, maybe we should call it a companion. Yeah. Series, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, that does make sense. Cause I was going to suggest like, would then should we just start referring to it as the companion novel? Mm -hmm. Because I think when you, yeah, when you say prequel, people just think that it's, oh, it's just early history stuff, but not necessarily important like you could forego reading it yeah and, then and continue honestly, like reading I, the blood ash and i wouldn't suggest forego reading this because again it, it's going to answer some questions that are probably just not going to be answered in the blood and ash series because it wouldn't come up um and but also it's going to give you information that's going to prepare you for some things that are going to happen in the blood and ash series you know and there's also this really big i think unexpected thing that you learn in a shadow in the ember that that is to me it's, it's pretty huge it's a big deal um and you know, it, it kind of will shape some of the events going forward okay so speak well i guess it depends on how much you can share but mm -hmm. with regard to that book there were a couple of questions first is Will you give hints about the consort that was mentioned in the pre blurb? I guess the little, <laughs> little description yeah. that came out last week. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna meet her. Um, it's in her POV. So, um, so the I, book is in her POV. The, yeah. the yeah, okay. Yeah, and I've you know I've confirmed in the group that her name is um, her nickname is Syria, or you can you can call her Syria, Sarah. Some people are probably gonna say Sarah. Um, uh, so how was I pronouncing it? Um, this is S E R A is her nickname. So, oh my gosh, so like I Sarah, know. yeah, I mean, but that's but how it Sarah, C Sarah, I, think, I don't know. And her real name is Serafina, so that is her full name. So, I think I was calling her, I call, but if you've ever, I mean, you know this stuff, but for people who are listening now, I will call a character by multiple different pronunciations of the name, yeah. So. <laughs> So like for, for, for the noobs, especially when they're very concerned about pronunciation and stuff, it's like, 
just go with your gut on this. Right, line. because I'm just like, I'm going to call that person five different versions of that name. So Yeah, exactly. And I may even spell it incorrectly. <laughs> but we and all know yeah. who we're talking about. So yeah. that's, that's all that matters. Okay, yes. so how would you describe the romance in um, A Shadow in the Ember? Would you, like, trope-wise, would you describe it as enemies to lovers, forbidden? Because <sighs> that was a question. Um... You know, it, it it's not enemies to lovers like Poppy and Hawk, but I mean, if you, there's a tagline that's released with that cover, right? That goes something along the line, make him fall in love, become his weakness and kill him. So, I mean, there is some information there. <laughs> so I don't, I, what would you call that? I don't know if that's really enemies to lovers or if that's, um, you know, uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm going to kill you, but... Right? <laughs> You're pretty. No, like, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, there's definitely a conflict. I mean, you know, and on yeah. and, and I've said this before, and you know this, because you obviously know a lot more about this book, but um, she, she is a very complicated character for me to write, because in a way, she is kind of like an anti-hero. Um, she is very like she I, I joke around I call her like the female Dexter where you know she can cut your throat with a drop of a hat if she feels that it's justified and she's not gonna she's not gonna really worry about it like she might a little bit but then she's kind of like meh it is what I'm it excited. is <laughs> it's like you know so she, yeah what I said I'm excited I mean yeah, as she, you know I'm never time you, you share stuff with me I'm like oh yeah that's great Sorry, I'm turning up. I'm, I'm just I'm um, really, granted, granted that in Zaddy Nick. I yeah, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy Nikos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, she's she is definitely like you're and you're gonna see some similarities between her and Poppy on purpose. Um, and then you're gonna see, you know, how vastly different they are in certain ways. Um, because I think Poppy still has um you know, what's a good word for it? Like, there's, I, I don't want to say not naiveness, but she, she definitely, ha Mike, why are you texting me? Is there a tornado outside? Great. Like, <laughs> I would hope that he shouts for you if there is a tornado. And probably not. not. He would probably text me. <laughs> this is me. There is a cyclone coming for the house. <laughs> Thought you should know. Um, no, um, you know, Poppy is, has a bit of an you know, naiveness to her, but I think, um, what's the right word? Like when you have- Experience or like-, like, like all, She's also, I think a bit of an optimist. Like she has, a, mm. and it's not that Sarah, Sarah doesn't have optimism, but she, she's harder. Like she, she knows, like she's has to do something and has had to do pretty terrible things. And so she kind of has like a hardness about her um, that is, you know, I don't think Poppy has, or you haven't seen Poppy have. Right, so far. So like far. what we've gotten for, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, speaking of Poppy, <clears throat> there are a few questions. Well, let me just get this one out of the way because it was the most commonly asked question. Obviously, you have said um, that this series, that the Blood and Ash series is going to be six books that you've mm -hmm. planned, um, and that was not, counting Castile's POV book that you had mm -hmm. already talked about doing yeah. like early on. Yeah. So the question is obviously the next book is going to be a, sh a shadow in the ember, which comes out in October. So then the next successive uh, blood and ash book, is that going to be like, do you know whose POV it will be in and, or will it be dual POV um, and do you have, I don't know if, if you're allowed to say like tentative plans for when it, I mean, I'm assuming like what, 22 or? Yeah, it's coming out release? next, yeah, it's coming out next year. I mean, there's not going to be a huge wait. I mean, cause I know some people will think, oh, well, it's going to be like a, a, a big wait if you don't count a shadow. But in my mind, I count a shadow because it's, has necessary information. Um, so there's not going to be a huge wait for it. Uh. You know, it, you know, I, I'm I'm reluctant to confirm anything because I, I feel like because you know, right? 
So I feel like that could change. I try to pretend like I don't so that yeah. people don't ask me, but. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, th there's a couple ways I've been going with it. And yes. so, and so I'm kind of like, you know, there's, there's certain things I want to be able to show. Um, and then there's, you know, so it's trying to find the right way to do this and the, and the right balance. Um, I mean, as, as people who have read previous books of mine, I have done dual POV. Um, and I, I, I actually enjoy writing the male POV and I haven't done it in a fairly long time. Um, but um, I hate writing dual, dual POV <laughs> because I feel, I mean, that's complicated because you really have to really in your mind plan to know where you start and end scenes so that you're not being repetitive, overlapping information. Um, and that can, that, that's complicated. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of work. Um, Meanwhile, so, like we as the readers, like don't even think about that. Like mm -hmm. we're just like, okay, but just give it, give us, give us what we're asking for. Not yeah. like, oh, please work for this. Like, I just, yeah. like, it's, I mean, obviously yeah. it's a lot of work, but yeah, and <laughs> it's just we're a, like we want it. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a lot of work, and you know, and also like I'm not sure if I would to do dual POV that I would want to continue in the following book doing dual POV. So it, it's you know I have to kind of like figure that out um but i think that's a great thing you know i, I feel like with this this series is the the availability or the whatever to be able to kind of break certain structural rules you know what i mean where it's like this is how a series goes and you don't do this and you don't do that um because that's just the way it is and i, I do feel like there's a, a little bit of a freedom there just to be like eh, i'm gonna do what i want yeah. <laughs> with this you know kind of thing. but it's a so. gift and a curse because now yeah. like when people want the answers you're like mm, wait yeah. and see <laughs> because i have learned um you know when i you know it, don't say something because it's like if you think you're gonna do something but it's not tentative I think sometimes people only hear what you think you will do and don't hear the tentative part. <laughs> so yeah. then you're like, oh no. So now you got, you know, you've done confused everybody. Well, and, and they're by, selective I mean, in, in what they are paying. It's like, they're just yeah. waiting for you to just say yes or no. And that's all mm -hmm. they're clinging to and not like all the yeah. extra stuff before. Well now, okay. So here's probably something you can answer about future. So, I, this is this is one of the infamous questions that get asked, and I, whenever I discuss it with Jen, we're always like, "Who hurt you, um, <laughs> Sarah?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this Sarah. Um, Damn okay. you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is are Castile and Poppy end game, Jennifer? Yes, yes, um, they're end game. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, I <laughs> no, I mean no. I mean if you if you like I said, I always can tell when they're new readers to me. And if they came to me from Sarah's books, yeah, because they trust nothing, exactly. like at all. <laughs> like I will get questions sometimes about certain characters, and I'm like, and I am, I'm like, who hurt you, and why was it Sarah? Because <laughs> it's, it's like, because it's like, which of Sarah's characters traumatized you? <laughs> um, yeah. So no, but if, if I'm gonna have like a third person coming in, like a viable love interest, they would have already been introduced by this point. I would, you know, just, just because of how I write, I would, oh, I threw that. Um, that's just how I write um, for me. So I would have had them introduced already. So, um, but no, I mean, they are in game. And I mean, and I know, I'm sure I, I know that a lot of people are asking about the joining and stuff and mm -hmm. I, we're not going to discuss it just because like, that's, I mean, that's clearly a very sensitive subject, <laughs> but like, but to kind of, try to talk about it like talk around that is like would you think and not even necessarily poppy and castile right and kieran like do you think that if a joining were to happen with like a couple in that situation that it would affect i mean it's not that uh, the joining <laughs> would the joining isn't there to like cause conflict within a romantic relationship pairing right yeah okay yeah. that's what I'm, ultimately what i'm trying to get at because i think that that's part part of the who hurt you crowd yeah. too like it's like I, I i think that a lot of the negative uh feelings not even necessarily but people who are scared about it i think are more scared because they they're worried that this is going to be like a we're breaking up 
the couple yeah. like yeah. to and have I it think, happen you know i think there's a couple things too to like and i always say this like when i talk about the joining and neither con whatever i'm going to say neither confirms denies <laughs> anything um i think one of the things there's a couple things with the joining it's like the joining one of the key things is it doesn't have to be sexual. It can happen and it, it can be very sexually charged. It can be sexually tense, but it doesn't have to go there. It could go there and it be organic between those people. Um, but it's not a, it, it, it wouldn't be like a love triangle. And right. like, for example, it's like people have, and, and everybody's entitled to, you know, their opinion on this and what they think, but there is, a difference between sometimes what you think something means and what it means in the industry and what it would mean to a writer. For example, the joining, if it happened, it is not a reverse harem. Um, that is, first off, there's a lot more cocks flying around in a reverse <laughs> harem. Like there's, Hashtag Willa. <laughs> yeah, like that's Willa's story. Thank you very much. Um, there's, yeah, there's a lot more of that going on. Um, and the, and they're in actual relationships, like they right, right? like they're actual relationships. Um, this would be like, and and so there's that. Um, also, in in the real world, there are people who do have. Um, I don't know if you would call it like a poly relationship because I, I mean I don't like I don't know if that's swingers either. They're just like, open. yeah, like yeah, and it's like. <laughs> mind your business you know, yeah. that kind of thing. you know like if that works for them mm -hmm. um and and then that's okay that doesn't mean they love each other less um but i think that is really where the joining becomes like controversial to some people it's just, it's because of their views on what they find acceptable in relationships and what they don't and that's completely understandable we just always have to remember that there are people out there, like there, there are actual people, I think, in the Blood and Ash script, one of them where they were in like a kind of a poly thing. Um, and, you know, and it's kind of, we have to kind of remember, like when we're talking about that stuff, that there are people out there who are living this life. And we have to be careful about like our own personal views on it. Like, yeah, you, you don't have, no one's going to make you do it. <laughs> like, so, right. I mean, like it's a thing, but I mean, you know, I like, if it was to happen, it would not be something where it would cause a problem with any relationships. And that's, you know, if it was Karen or somebody else, like it would right. not be something that it would cause a problem. Well, um, and I think and also, I think you've also done a really good job as far as setting everything up and not set, I'm saying like setting it up for like that. But I mean to say like, there have been moments where the characters have openly discussed mm -hmm things and so it seems like it's not it's not like uh i mean it seems like like for example like poppy like she's never like in my opinion like she's never come out and said oh absolutely not but it's just more no. like tell me more i mean well, Rachel, she's, she's very, very curious, curious you know right and, like, yeah she's just kind of like but, how does that work like when, yeah when they're but at no reading point, about the, but at the no origin, point did yeah. it seem like castile was like shutting it down like no. don't even think about it because it could never happen type of thing so that's yeah. why i feel like if it were a, I mean, granted, of course, oh, I've read your books for years, so I know that you wouldn't be like breaking up a couple oh, from right. it, like, <laughs> or a threesome just, comes out of left field. Right. I mean, look, I am like, always. I mean, up you're for not going to play some <laughs> random threesome thrown in. Um, random. No. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah, and that's one thing too. Is like, and and you know this, like when I had kind of came up the idea of the, jo the joining and was and trying to decide whether or not I would do that or not um, is I wanted to make sure that if that were to happen, it would only ever happen once Poppy and Hawk were in a relationship, you know, once they were extremely stable. And I, cause I think in real life, if you have that, you, you both have to be in such a strong committed relationship to one another that you can then engage if you want to and things like that um and so i would you know that's it that's why i would i would have never just thrown it in there right. um but yeah i mean it may happen it may not i mean you know I, I just hope that if it does happen people just skim those pages and if it right. doesn't happen <laughs> just skip people, ahead if you don't like it <laughs> yeah people don't you know get mad because i didn't write it you know <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it's just I mean, kind of. I mean, kind of in that same vein, though, because somebody asked, "Would you ever consider 
writing a Willa Collins diary content or novella or book. I mean, I could, mean you could I also give us that there. I, I yeah, I don't know. Probably not. Um, mainly because when, if you read like the scenes with Willa's um, entries in it, she's very prosy. <laughs> Oh, um, and my God, I cannot imagine writing even a novella in this really prosy language. Um, but I mean, I could always do like little bonus content, like, you know, with the newsletter or something like that. But also it's like, you know, I think too, it's, well, I probably couldn't do it in the newsletter because we would have, you know, we have to be mindful of our younger audience on our YA. So like, could well, you what imagine if we did it like a, like opening up like that a... newsletter? Like we'll talk to talk to the Blue Box team, but like, can we do it? Like maybe like a pre-order offer, like you know, campaign yeah. or something, or like a a part of a it up. up, right? I know. <laughs> I mean, listen, or you could just write it for me, and then I will read it and just not tell anybody about it, and that's fine. So, putting that out there. Okay. So speaking of a not the joining, but like speaking of just characters. Um, someone asked, since Poppy broke the bonds, does she get a bonded woven like Kieran and Castile? No, um, because she, she is, um, the bond that is between her and the, the woven is different, um, in a lot of aspects than what like Cass and Kieran are. Um, so she doesn't have just one. She kind of has all of them. But they're not like she has bonded. a pack. Yeah, she has the whole pack. She has she, she's bringing the whole damn team with her. Yeah. Um. So they and and so she has um she has that, but they're not. I gotta stop messing with things. I'm just dropping shit, throwing. <laughs> That's it. why I'm holding a clipboard so that I stop fidgeting. But uh, yeah. yeah, I always fidget. Um. But she, but they're not bonded in the same way that like where it, you know there's this and it's I feel like it's I feel like the bond between like an Atlantean and a Wolven, if they chose to do that, would be very intense. Like, it would be very, very intense. And, you know, you would be very close, close with that person. But I feel like with, with Poppy, I mean, she's like, in a way, she also represents, you know, the primal god that basically gave the wolf, Wolven an option to become mortal and to have these extended lifelines. So in a way, she's like an, an extension of him. Um, so it's, so I think that's why too, that there's this, this closeness, but it's not the same as when okay. they bond with the Atlanteans. <laughs> um, I'm like, I was like skimming through these questions. Okay. So here's, here's one that's a little off topic, but, um, can we, <laughs> can we expect or get more poppy chopping head off, heads off content? Because that mm -hmm. was epic. <laughs> um yeah I, I'll, I'll not say what scene that is just in case you haven't finished the book oh yeah but, but yeah but I, I mean say it was spoilery but yeah yes um yeah so yeah. Uh, hopefully if you haven't read the book you're not watching this and you're not I know not, I'm not going to be like super we're not going to be like super obvious to something but you're ultimately going to get spoiled by something yeah but, um yeah I, I that was one of my favorite scenes because I just that I always knew that that was kind of how I wanted to end the book and because to me it was like the first sign of uh, oh gosh how do I because <laughs> I was getting ready to spoil something oh um, but, <laughs> but like yeah but as long like, as it's you and not me that's all right <laughs> be like it's just full um no but you know it, it, it's the first sign of her like really starting to it's, I mean it's not really the first sign of her coming to her own there's been many many other scenes of that but like once you read a shadow in the ember you will understand where she may get like there there is a there is um a certain level of i feel like coldness that you have to have to be able to do things like that even if it's justified there has to be something in you that allows you to do that I mean, like even castile. if you're, you're yeah right <laughs> no i mean like but castile in you to do yeah that. right i know that's why i said like, mm -hmm. yeah i was like i was just laughing but choosing to ignore at the same time <laughs> And that's uh, our friendship in a nutshell. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Ha -ha, Jen, Jen is just like, oh, sweet child. <laughs> child. <laughs> um, no, but uh, but you, because you, you think about it this way. It's like you could be really, really, really hurt and ticked off. Somebody's done something terrible to you and you want them to pay. You want them to go to jail. You may even want capital punishment for them. But not everybody's going to be like, well, 
I'm going to kill you. <laughs> right. <I'm> do it. <laughs> um, and so there has to be, I feel like, and you'll see where she gets a bit of that from. Um, but yeah, that is one of my favorite scenes ever because it, it's, but because, you know, it, it's, it's a message that Castile would, and, and also I just imagine that when, you know, he hears what she did, he's going to start laughing. I mean, he's yeah. just going to be like, he's going to be aroused. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> get aroused. Um, you know, he's he's going to be proud and he's going to be like, you done, you done fucked up. <laughs> she's mad. They're going to be wiping a tear away. Like, Oh, yeah. sweet grasshopper. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's learned so much. <laughs> okay. So speaker. So this may not, this isn't as a uh, spoilery for future as other ones, but like, I know that we talked about, you have already said that you're going to do a Castile POV book. You just haven't said when and which, but do you, aside from Castile and Poppy and now Serafina, um, who, who else would you consider or could you consider doing POV from someone else's perspective? Maybe someone we've already met and Karen. yes. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, yeah. You know, the funny thing is, is, um, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've said to people before, cause there's, like when people realized there were six books in the series, there was, you know, some worry that people were like, Oh no, I hope the relationship isn't dragged out. Yada, yada for six books. And I mean, and I was like, you know, once again, if you've read me, I like to show the couples together fighting together. Like, you know, right. I, I want to show them moving on to the next step, but also, you know, throughout that the series, I do have plans that there will be a different POV coming in at some point. Um, and you have met the person um, who I, I mean, I know who, I mean, okay, I can say this. See, this is where Stephanie's going to get me in trouble. And I, I feel like, <laughs> like where's Liz? Liz or Jillian's yeah. watching. Um, <laughs> um, no, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do have plans to have, there, there is going to be somebody else coming in at some point um, that you have met. Um, because the book three is kind of like the middle part of a book, right? So now you're at this point where you know, and, and, and you know, it, it's kind of like screenwriting in a way they say like, you know, you got to undo the world at, in the third book or beyond mm -hmm. to keep people interested. So you have to take everything you just told people shake it up <laughs> and you know and then really start the bigger picture starts to come into play and so the third book I, I feel like at the end becomes a turning point as it goes into the fourth books and beyond is it becomes much bigger than what started this whole thing um or the better way to describe it is eventually you will learn truly what started it and started everything in the Flesh and Flat Fire series, because there's going to be something that you're going to learn about in that book that is going to mm -hmm. rear its very pow powerful and ugly head eventually um, in the Blood and Ash series. Well, speaking of rearing heads, um... <laughs> well, I can't wait to see where this is going. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I wish, though, that I did have something like witty to say there, but I, don't. I know, right? Um... I was going to be really proud of you. <laughs> That was the case. This is going to be like, end chat. Bye. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's when you go like the, let's make sure I do it right. The... Someone, asked... <laughs> Someone asked, will there be dragons in A Shadow in the Ember? Chad? Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're, they're everywhere in that book. I mean, like, like also, if gonna... anybody did notice, Peekaboo, there's something on the cover of A Shadow of the Ember. Yes. That we've yeah, noticed look... that some people still haven't caught. So, yeah. Study look that. very close <laughs> at the Shadow and the Ember cover. You will notice something <laughs> sneakily in there. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so A Shadow and the Ember is a very large book. It's, it's probably going to be, God help us, pushing close to the crown of Gilded Bones Lind. So a lot happens. There's a lot. You're, you're going to start in the mortal realm. You're going to be in Carcedonia, which is the the cap uh, at that time is the capital of a different kingdom, but it is the Carcedonia that you will eventually see in the Blood and Ash series. 
Um, and so you're in the mortal realm. They do go into Elysium, into the Shadowlands. Um, and so, you, and then also they end up going to some other parts in Elysium eventually. And so once they get, you know, you're going to see the, the Drakens. You're going to see, you're going to learn how they became who they are. And, um, and no, there's, 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 there's uh, definitely the dragons and they are um, two baby ones, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there's um, Reaver and there's Jadis and Reaver is older than Jadis, but I kind of modeled them after Apollo and Artemis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah. So one's so. going to be, one's going to have a hurting ball. And... <laughs> I know. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but one of the things that I find hilarious with Apollo and Artemis is like, they will just fight and play and play fight all day long and just on top of one another. I mean, when they play fight, I mean, they are, there is, they're on top and one is on top of the other, the other top is on, you know, it's just ridiculous. But if Artemis is tired and Apollo is tired, Artemis wants to go and lay down next to him. He oh. wants none of that, like none of that whatsoever. <laughs> And it just cracks me up because I'm like, all day long, you two have been <laughs> up each other's butt, like just constantly, <laughs> but you can't let her lay next to you. No snaps. Uh, no, like, no. <laughs> um, so it's a lot like their relationship is a lot like um, Apollo and Artemis. Is well, speaking of dragons, but not in your books, someone asked, where did you get your cement dragon that you posted uh, about? It's the place is called um, Paragold which is apparently just Wayfair, I learned, oh. after placing the order. It's like, the, they call it, and this sounds so, like, hoity-toity and ridiculous. <laughs> it's supposedly, like, I didn't know this, but when, after I placed the order and I got the email, I was like, this looks a lot like Wayfair. And then they call themselves, like, the luxury side of Wayfair. And I'm like, you're just, I have the weird shit side of Wayfair. Like, <laughs> the dark like you have stone dragons. <laughs> what is, like, I mean, stop. You're on the dock like right kind of you're medieval side, but but yeah but they have like they don't there's they don't just have expensive stuff I, th I think they just have like um probably really handmade stuff like where it's mm -hmm. not like um you know something they you know a company makes a million versions of so mm -hmm. but they had this really cool one that i didn't get because i just had a feeling with the wind here just knowing my luck because these things are heavy but um, they had one that was kind of standing up, like it was. Um, Ooh, like yeah, it was. It was. It was taller, um, and I really liked that. But I was like, yeah, I just I just see so much shit going wrong with that. That's not even funny. Have do have the dogs taken well to the dragon? Um, right now, because they accidentally because there was a there was a mess up, and I ended up with two of them. Um, so right now, I just the pool is still closed. It's supposed to be opened up, I guess, next week in time for the cicadas. So that should be fun. Um, but yeah. you know, the waterfall thing, I, mm -hmm. I just have them sitting right now on each end of that. Oh, so wow. The, yeah. So the first, I thought, well, that's the kind pool. Of a cool place to put them. Um, <laughs> so the first, the first day they were there, they noticed them and they were just kind of like, mm, <laughs> what, the, what the fuck's that? <laughs> you know? So I can just imagine Apollo. Yeah. He's like such a scaredy cat, but he's like so, like, but he's not. Mm -hmm. Like he's, yeah. Like he'll he might be afraid, but that ain't gonna stop him. From right. Doing something incredibly stupid. Meanwhile, my 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 girlfriend was barking at the thunder earlier. You said so. Yeah, but she started to get, and I was really worried about this because you know how does Ernie do in storms? He doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. He also barks at the thunder, and he also, like, I mean, he, when I, my old neighborhood that I lived in, when they would, because um, where we are right now, we're on the corner, so we don't have any buildings around, like, my windows, but at my old apartment, I did, and um, people, when they would set off fireworks, oh, he yeah. would, like, go into, like, the window and, like, lay down and watch him. Watch him, like, yeah. Zero fucks. Like, he was yeah. Like, <laughs> so I have this theory that smaller breed dogs do not care about thunder or fireworks unless you're a chihuahua. If you're a chihuahua, you're just cracked out. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. you're, you're going to have problems with everything. Um, but like Loki could not, I mean, I could take Loki outside and hold her while neighbors shot out, shot up like Antietam style 4th of <laughs> July celebration fireworks. She didn't care. 
<laughs> Diesel, on the other hand, that poor dog, he was terrified of him. And funny. never mind that he was a retired canine. Yeah, like, and yeah, and that's the thing I couldn't understand about him because you know he worked with Mike for a long time, and all I kept thinking is, if you're this freaked out by thunder or explode, what what would happen if um someone had a sh <laughs> the gun went right? off somewhere? Like you're just <laughs> like. Well, maybe he's like, you later. maybe he's like uh he's like Bucky, the Winter Soldier, where like you just give him oh. like the commands and like he's, and he's just, just like turns. rewired to be fine. <laughs> yeah, he just suddenly becomes like, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. And honestly, it could just be that that certain sound mm. wouldn't you know tr I guess trigger him. But he he had problems. But I had read on the internet that border collies apparently do not like thunderstorms or um fireworks and so this was the first time it's stormed since we you know she's been alive basically and um she was getting anxious i mean she oh, uh, i was yeah. getting ready for the the video and i was like let me go check on her and so i go out into the the, the hall i leave the bedroom and apollo is laying in the sitting room on his little his little bean bag that he's commandeered and so I'm like, where's your friend? And he's like, I don't care, basically. So I go out and then Artemis, Artemis is underneath the kitchen table. And oh. I'm like, Apollo, you couldn't be out here being a little bit supportive with her. She is complete. I'm, I'm like, that poor dog. He's like, she'll be all right. Yeah, he's like, no, I don't got time for this. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> poor babies. Okay, so this question... I, when I wrote it down, I was like, I think I know the answer to it, but who knows? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> which came first when you were writing the Blood and Ash series? Was it the world or the characters? Like, which came to you first? The characters um, came first, and then the world came to me, and then some of the characters or characteristics of them changed. So I almost always start with characters first and then the world. Um, because I feel like, you know, you learn so much about your character as you're writing them in the world. But to me, the character at the end of the day is, is the most important because that I would hope is what people are probably reading for. So I always start with the character. And obviously that's what draws you in too. Like mm. for a start, because I guess to some extent, like, especially with, uh, from Blood and Ash, the way that that book opened up, technically you don't get like too much fantasy-ish. I mean, like it's, it reads almost like a historical, mm -hmm. like just because like they're in the Red Pearl. And yeah. so like, it's not, it's so obviously the characters are what are mm -hmm. driving that story before the world gets built in yeah. in the, the story. So yeah. Okay, well also in that same vein, which came first slash was planned was it the flesh and fire series or the blood and, and i guess by series i'm assuming like just the story arc or the world um like, like the did, idea yeah like did you always know that there would be the companion series or did you find that like you needed it to be a companion series because of like how rich and content it is <laughs> when i wrote from blood and ash i really didn't know that you know, that would be that I would want to go there. But as I continue to write in the series, I knew that I wanted to be able to tell and to show like, you know, what do you mean the gods are asleep? Why did they go asleep? Um, and kind of tell that history. And so that that is when I knew roughly around the kingdom of flesh and fire that I wanted to tell that story. Um, and then once I really started to think about how the series was going to go, I knew that it made sense for a shadow to come out after the end of book three, because, you know, you, you I mean, this is, I, I mean, this should be that much of a spoiler anyways, because there's teasers shared about this, but um, I mean, you meet Nikos in the crown of Gilded Bones. So you see him. And so I, I think with him being finally, and then you really do learn that he had a consort, you learn that he, they had two sons. Um, and you start learning a little bit more of that history. And you also learn that th the land doesn't stop at Atlantia. Once you go past those mountains is Elysium, um, which is where the gods are supposedly at. So um, I, I knew I wanted to tell that because I, I just feel like, you know, sometimes, I, and, you, and as you know, I, I've written a lot of series. 
series. And sometimes you can expand a series and sometimes you really can't because it's like you can always expand a series, but is it going to be new? Is it enough? Is it going to have, like, is it going to be fresh enough that people are not going to be like, well, I just feel like I just read this book all over again. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like with this series, there's so much that can, that you can expand on. Like, especially like as the series really gets going, I mean, you've got to realize too that there's now Draken that have woke up. I mean, so now there are dragons and they have left um, Atlantia. I mean, they're, they are flying west. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, um, so, and, you know, and they are, you know, interesting characters because, you know, they've been asleep for so long. Um, and so they're waking up to a totally, it, it would be like us, it would be like us going to sleep in the middle ages. <laughs> And then waking, waking up, up now and being like, what is going on? Like kind of thing. So cars and things. <laughs> right. Um, so they, um, so, so they, they are interesting. I, I feel like you could explore. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of material there. I mean, obviously I'm, well, I just full disclosure for everybody. I told Jen, I was rereading the crown on Friday when we originally mm -hmm. were going to go live because I was worried that in having this conversation that I would accidentally like spoil something that um, like Jen has told books. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like trying to get Jen to do it on her own so that it's not <laughs> my fault. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So we covered the release date because that was a big question. The joining of course. Um, one question about Castile was, um, did Castile lie? when he said he'd never seen Poppy's memories while feeding? Um, no, he has not lied about that. Um, he, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't um, fed, I feel like long enough for that really to occur. Um, and, you know, she, she can, she can do it you know, was spoiler. Um, I wish you, the way you could be like, there should be a filter that's like, spoiler. I know, spoiler. right? It just pops up. On um, <laughs> that'd be cool. Um, somebody designed that. Um, but, and it could just flash as we're talking and then goes away when it's done so people could like, <laughs> m m you know, mute it. Um, but yeah, so because she could do it easier because of what she is. And you learn, you know, and again, in the shadow, you learn where she gets her who she gets what ability from um and so she, it was easier for her so she can connect pretty quickly it's not that easy for him to do it and also i just don't think he would find that like appropriate to do like you know what i mean like to start or does not tell her that he could too like... yeah yeah like he's he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't do, uh, yeah like if he did it like it, i think it would be more of like accidental and i feel like he would and this is going to sound dirty but he would pull out if, pull you know out, what I mean? <laughs> yeah he'd pull out um he would pull out of her memories if i think he was doing that but also i feel like if he ended up seeing like some of her bad memories um you know it would just and, like he you know it wouldn't be a good thing for him yeah, I mean, and plus, I think uh, Castile has already had his, like, yeah. <laughs> moment of half-truths and or right? omission. Like, I don't think he's going to go there again. <laughs> right, I know. Like, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's, and that's the thing with him. It's, it's, it's like, he's not going to, you know, because he, he is, if, you know, he, he struggled with what, you know, he, he's done in the first book and things like that. And he's, you know, really still hasn't forgiven himself for that. Um, and so he's not going to do something like that. Yeah. I have every confidence in him <laughs> and his skills. Okay. So since I know that you're going to have to go soon for the animals, um, I'll ask a couple of uh, uh, like shop questions that people want to know. Um, will you have plans for, um, signed books again, obviously in the shop when it reopens. And do you plan for uh, like the new Blood and Ash books? So I guess like then the Crown and then a Shadow. Which yeah, that's so, not in October, but yeah. So the shop is going to be opening soonish. Um, yeah. So I, I do, I do, I have ordered a limited amount of the Crown at Gilded Bone um, 
paperbacks, ready paperback in. Um, they haven't shown up yet. Um, uh, so th we'll have that. We, you know, we will have some other books um, in, but it's kind of going to be like not a lot when we reopen, um, mainly because all of us have been like very busy this last couple months, especially with me, like in deadline hell <laughs> after yeah. deadline hell. Um, and so I, I feel like the next time we, we reopen, like we're, we, we, blah, 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 we will reopen soon, but then we'll open again towards the end of the year. And I feel like that's going to be like the big launch of stuff yeah. because you're going to have a lot, there's new merchandise coming, but yeah. now, but there'll be more then. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and yeah, cause obviously since I work with Jen and, um, like I've been working on like the merch and all that stuff on the background. I mean, a lot of the reason the logistics as of the shop opening is also reliant on Jen's availability in addition to availability to make sure that things can be fulfilled and that kind of thing. So you guys aren't like ordering mm -hmm. something and then it's not being fulfilled for like two to three months. Um, but yeah, so Jen is still under deadline in case anybody missed that. <laughs> like Jen is still writing. <laughs> right now so as soon as like jen can take a breather <laughs> uh, yeah i mean so honestly <laughs> the shop is probably going to open up towards the end of may right yeah. so yeah. um yeah so and and it'll be open and then um and then or, you know we may if we you know we may push that back a little bit if we decide to um try to get some other things in i guess but I'm, I'm, re I'm really not wanting, I mean, there are other books that are going to be in the shop right now, but I really don't want to go like balls to the wall on ordering that stuff right now because I'm, I'm going to have to go balls to the wall in September. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just, I mean, and, and stuff can confirm. That's just, that's a lot of stuff. Like that's, a, I mean, because like, you know, for me and for Mike, it's like, you know, you got to carry all these boxes downstairs and if you've ever carried boxes of books like it is the worst thing to carry i feel like is boxes of books well they and then they so get heavy. carried down and then we also carry them back upstairs mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. when they're going out to people because that's another yeah. thing like all of like the the non-wearable merch is fulfilled out of jen's house and yeah. so like the the shirts and stuff gets fulfilled elsewhere but uh the the books especially mike is just so well, excited about yes <laughs> like like with the polycon stuff oh yeah <laughs> um but like and you gotta think too with the books so if you order 100 copies of like 10 books that's a thousand books right there right that you are carrying downstairs unpacking signing and then shelving them because you know you have to have like this system in place that makes it easy to when you're fulfilling orders just to start grabbing stuff off the shelves um and so it's a lot i mean it takes a couple i mean it's a, it also depends on how pro proactive or productive i'm being you know like when when i do the big shop opening um when it's like you, you go downstairs right and it's like every night you go downstairs and you just do another box like and you get them up there um but if you're being not proactive or productive then you have just hell in front of you <laughs> well but i'm sure that also uh for those who are waiting for additional releases in this world especially like i'm sure that uh they will appreciate that you mm -hmm. are taking the time to write that yeah. instead of unpacking books <laughs> yeah. at the time plus i mean of course like not just balls. not just that like jen also had tip-in sheets to sign for like the book boxes that uh were doing the blood and ash yeah, and i still have another set of that yeah. yeah so so fingers crossed but like obviously we'll keep everybody posted on uh the progress of that and then the last thing um that people asked i don't know how much we can share right now but um is about a polycon you already mentioned it mm -hmm. like you you announced in the facebook group for polycon and in case anybody doesn't know what that is a polycon is an event that jen owns um that up until covid was annual uh mm -hmm. and it was an author event and it was a multiple day event so we would have signings and panels and all kinds of stuff so what can like what update can you share with everybody here about a polycon 22 now i guess because it's not 21 anymore 
Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing I wanted to do before I even decided when we were going to come back and do a polycon is to make sure that it would be feasible and it wouldn't be a situation where we would say, okay, we're going to do, that's why I canceled 2021 so early because first off, not dumb. I was like, this, this ain't going anywhere. This, Mm -hmm. We are still going to be doing this year from and now. Thank you like, for that, because that yeah, would have been like, nope, more of a um, headache to deal with this year, yeah. trying to cancel everything again. Yeah. So <laughs> then also, as, as uh, Steph, Melissa, and I had talked about for 2022, I was very hesitant of doing it in spring, because you got to think your spring and your fall times are always virus seasons as it is. Um, that's where you're always going to get a wave of a virus. And um conventions are like virus vectors <laughs> you know like they, mm -hmm. it, that is like a fill day so and you know back when we had to make this decision very little vaccines had rolled out at that point um so what we decided to do was to push 2022 spring to summer of 2022 um, so it's going to take place in the summer in July. I don't know the dates off the top of my head. The I know of, it's the end of July. Yeah, end of July. We'll, we'll post the date soon, but um Yeah. Yeah. And I know that July. yeah, and I saw that some people are like, you know, I hope it's not July because of, you know, there's this event, that event, and you know, we don't have like I just hope people understand that event organizers and hotels do not have a lot of options right now because we are not the only thing pushing back dates. Um, so that was when they had available and we just had to take it. So, um, you know, so if it's, if it's too close to another event or it's at the same time, unfortunately, I mean, it's just, I, I feel like give everybody a little bit of, in the event world grace a little bit because it's like a lot of people are for it. Cause I always see a lot of posts too about people being upset because of um, certain things to do with event cancellations. And it's like, I feel like you don't, it, unless you run an event, own an event, you, it's, it, you probably don't know how hard it is to cancel the event <laughs> yeah. in the midst oh of gosh. a pandemic. Um, um, to reschedule, yeah, to reschedule event. And believe it or not, a lot of it is out of our control because certain things have to be declared um, for you then to get out of not paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in cancellation fees. And so a lot of people get stuck. I mean, they get stuck in terrible situations of that kind of stuff. So um, just being like kind of, you know, patient, understanding that, you know, you with weekend change and, and stuff like that, but hopefully in 2023, my God, I can't believe we're even talking about I know. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully 2023 will be back in normal-ish time frame. Because what people don't realize, Stephanie and all of us know, is that we were kind of moving the event back a little bit each year on purpose because we wanted to get away from winter weather. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the eastern seaboard area, the eastern mid-Atlantic region, the month of April, it can be 80 degrees or you can have three feet of snow. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with March. So we were kind of trying to get as far away from that as possible. Um, so and at the yeah. time, flu season. But then, yeah, I mean, yeah, now, now it's like COVID season. Doesn't even right? Like flu? Oh. What is that? We don't even know anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. Now, and, and like you said, like it's it's our plan for twenty three. I mean, because obviously we contract these things so far in mm -hmm. advance uh, that twenty three is still. I actually, I think it's in. May, I think of 23. Uh, it's like the last but... week of April, first week yeah. of May or something like, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and also just to also give everybody insight on that, like it's still going to be taking place in the same place that it's been the last two mm -hmm. years. So DC, we're still maintaining that. And then afterwards, like obviously we'll reevaluate. We'll, 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 we'll roll with things as they come. But for right now, yes, we're still, we're definitely having an event in 22 and possibly I'm assuming like by the summer we'll have a more clear like picture on like how the guests that are coming and the ticket sales yes. and all that yeah, stuff. And, and like I said in a group like I haven't even begun to reach out to authors yet and the reason being is because I know because I'm friends of a lot of them they're very weary of agreeing to anything right now 
because they really want to see like how things go um, because nobody wants to sign up for something and then cancel. So that's why I wanted to make sure that we also had time to, to have authors who feel comfortable and then also attendees who would feel comfortable um, coming in. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll say this right now. Um, if for example, come summer of 2022, I hope, I hope we get there that it will be like a type of place that you don't have to worry about things like masks, but if they're still around, if you come, you're going to be required to wear a mask. I mean, as simple as that, because I'm not going to hold an event or something that potentially could end up making someone sick or die. Yeah. Um, so, you we're know, just that's planning, a problem. I mean, and, we're, we're planning for yeah. the worst and hoping for the best yeah. with the event so far. And I mean, like we're already team wise adapting to the yeah. current state of things and hoping that it changes, but at least like we have a plan in place. Yeah. So that it's not like a, oh shit, now we got to change things. Because up, I mean, so. to be honest with you, we could get, I mean, God, I hope this is not the case, but we could get to summer 2022 and they still have a, a cap limit on gatherings. So mm -hmm. then we have to super adjust again at that point. Um, so um, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's really kind of playing it by ear. Like you said, hoping for the best, but also having these contingency plans mm -hmm. um, in the back that we can still do something. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I you know, I don't, I think when I think of summer 2022, I think we're, we'll be on the home stretch, hopefully yeah. of this. Um, but I don't think things are going to be 100% normal. I do think there's still going to be probably requirements and restrictions on certain things. Um, so I, I mean, I well, think, even the vaccine, uh, like there's still like, for I mean, me, like Jen had Moderna, I, I got Pfizer mm -hmm. and they've already said like with Pfizer, like they're going to, we're going to need a booster. And like, they said the same thing with Moderna. Yeah. Oh, my, okay, yeah. So so now yeah. we're going to be like, it, we're not in the same exact boat, but now it's like, oh shit, now we're going to have to schedule like booster appointments. And I know. those are I'm probably like, going to be hard to come by. I didn't even get the damn vaccine right now <laughs> because everybody else hasn't gotten the damn vaccine. Exactly. Now I got to get a damn booster shot. So like, Thanks, we, guys. Got, I mean, we got a lot to work through, Hope but my I, 5G starts <laughs> kicking in soon. I know. Working well. <laughs> Oh, my vaccine gives me better internet service. I'd be all for that. You definitely need it. Right? Did I tell you that um, I signed up for Starlink? No. Um, so I think it's called Starlink. It's those um, satellites Elon Musk keeps shooting up into the sky. Uh -huh. um, it's the internet service. And uh, across the neighbors across the street, they were able to beta test it. And oh. they said it's super fast. Like it's faster oh, than cable. Um, it's the, they were like, it's the fastest internet they've ever seen. So I qualified for it and I paid the deposit on the equipment. And supposedly I'm supposed to get the equipment sometime by middle of the year. Um, and I hope so because, you know, and it's not, I mean, keep in mind, it's just not. You need it, especially. Yeah, yeah. And look, I survived <laughs> with shitty internet service, but there's a lot of people like kids in school who live in these because I, I, somebody was somebody was saying something like, oh, it you know affects stargazing. And I'm like, yes, it affects stargazing, but it's also providing Internet to rural areas that cannot get internet service. Like, so, I mean, like the kids can't have, be in school and have to be. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, this whole, yeah. a lot of these people here have the same Internet services I do. And I'm like, how in the hell do these, these kids been going and doing their schoolwork online? Like, if you've watched me try to do a Zoom, I mean, can you imagine, like, what, no. I mean, how I, much that's why I was must like, be, oh. yeah, yes. must be missing as it continuously freezes up on them? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I'm hoping it shows up, um, and I'll be so excited. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll all uh, <laughs> pray yeah, for you, you guys all. How has the prayers. service been for this whole video? It's been good, Jen. I mean, you know like, why? Just a, a couple Turned of like the internet. <laughs> oh. I'm on cellular, yeah. <laughs> and I can only really do that on the Instagram and probably Facebook. I can't do that on anything else. Oh, that sucks. So, mm -hmm. like, not even getting like a hot spot, like for I have a hot spot. Oh. Um, it doesn't work as well as just going onto my cellar on the phone. Oh, boo. Yeah. I'm so sorry. And this is also oh, Verizon. So I don't understand oh. why <laughs> it's like that, but I tried different ways and it's just, but again, I can't turn the internet off and do zoom on my phone. Um, it just, it just will not work. 
Um, so I don't know if it's just maybe something built in with Instagram or Facebook or I mean, who knows? Because there, there has to be I a mean, reason that it's like that. Probably. Yeah, so. <laughs> knowing, knowing the Zuck. Yeah, uh, right. He's yeah. like, I'll make sure you can use my services. <laughs> exactly. Well, great. Well, all right, Jen, I'm going to let you go because the animals are very important and you need yes. to prepare for my, my donkey that's coming. <sighs> um, <laughs> well, the, the thing, we were, like, Mike was going to, like, feed them before the video started but then like the thunderstorm came and honestly i didn't um, think the thunderstorm was going to be like we knew it was calling for a storm today but it's like it's the beginning of may typically we don't get bad thunderstorms and tornadoes at the beginning of may that's a summer thing usually so mm -hmm. that's why i was kind of like oh shit and i was like i hope stephanie doesn't think i'm just being like like no I knew on the video that's why i was like let me I send you this screenshot of the, the warning system <laughs> Last year before COVID, I used to come up to Jen's house weekly and we would do live chats from her house, like in her Facebook group, Jay Landers. And we, we experienced it then. Like, I mean, I, I know that your internet is just not the best on a sunny yeah. day. So, um, <laughs> so I can really imagine with a tornado and a windstorm. Um, I thought windstorm was crazy. I know, but the but the dragons stood firm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those 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 things are not going anywhere. <laughs> those things are heavy. Good. All right, Jen. <laughs> well, thanks so much dragon. for uh, for chatting with me. Even though you, you know I asked a lot of questions and I know the answer to, but I know that the readers are excited to hear a, a lot about it. And now, hopefully, they got the answers that they wanted. Oh my god. The rain. Sorry, I don't know oh, if, I was if like, I can well, hear I was like, it. You're like, oh my out. God, stop asking me questions. No, <laughs> it's just I'm like... sitting here and I'm like, oh, rain. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Rude. Mm, All right, Jen. Well, what? So, what, oh, so we have Grace and Glory coming out June first. That's Jen's yeah. next release. We dropped the pre-order campaign today. Um, so Beautiful fan art by Dominique. Yes, but that fan art is super cute. Mm -hmm. Um. And then after that, we're sitting pretty until, well, no, we have the Wicked movie this month with yeah. Passion Flicks that's coming mm -hmm. out. And then, and then, yeah, everybody, we sit pretty until a shadow comes out, yeah. right? Like, you don't have yeah. anything else in between? No. Yeah. Fine, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so weird. Like, it's so, because I mean, I'm so used to you having, like, so many like multi-genre releases every yeah, year yeah like, like usually there would be like fish. one in the middle like in the middle yeah. of the summer <laughs> yeah like there was there was the da vincent series which is the contemporary the goth yeah. gothic romance uh series so you were having that and then you had obviously the origin series which uh, um there was also a question about the origin but jen has answered a lot of like these commonly asked questions mm -hmm. um we've posted it on um especially in the jay landers group i would suggest if you are a noob go to Jen's Jay Landers group and um, check out the an announcements under there because there are a lot of like frequently asked question answers there, so especially about the origin series. So anyways, but okay. Well, thanks, Jen. Give hugs thanks, to the guys. prize for me. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And I'll be saving this for anybody who came late. So all right. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Bye.